Welcome to Legatum Institute. Thank, thank you, you very for, much. Thank you for joining us. I just had a few questions. Um, yeah. Only take a short time. We're having a, we're having a whole seminar on the suburbs, and we're looking at the history of it, the present day, and the future of it. And I wondered if you could just quickly tell us what you think the suburbs are. So what's your definition of suburbia? Well, suburbia, I mean, I come from the constituency Wantage where John Betjeman used to live, so I suppose I think about Metroland. And, um, you know, one thinks of the suburbs as being that bridge between the country, the rural countryside and the densely packed uh, inner city, if you like. Uh, I grew up in a suburb in Chiswick in West London, so suburbs are also parts of the countryside that have been eaten up by cities. They're villages that have become joined to the city, as it were. But I think there is a kind of um, English, in particular, kind of English ideal about the suburb, of having the best of both worlds, the convenience of the city, but the space to breathe that the countryside gives you. And you've hinted at it, but what would you say in particular is the link between the suburbs and uh, prosperity, that is, not just wealth, but well-being. You've hinted at that. But well, I think, uh, as I say, the, the suburb sort of keeps that village feel. So I think about Chiswick, where I grew up. It feels like a village and a community, uh, but it also feels uh, like um, uh, not part of a, uh, a, you know, Mayfair or Westminster have a very different character in terms of their uh, denseness. So I think it's important... Uh, for uh, it is part of the offer of cities and I don't know whether I'm straying into dangerous territory to say that it may well be age related that the yeah. inner city is for the young uh, and for people who um, you know, want to socialise and the suburbs tend to be more for families so yeah. uh, I think the suburbs are important for prosperity in the sense that they keep people close to the cities, but they provide them with that alternative way of living that people tend to want, particularly once they start to have a family. And, and do you think, therefore, uh, suburbs should be regenerated? And if so, how would you do that? Just well, I think we're having this whole debate, and this is why what the Legatum Institute is doing is so important, about planning and uh, architecture. So I commissioned the Farrell Review from Terry Farrell to look at... Uh, what kind of policies government could create to say, in order to say we had an architectural policy, and that includes the skills and training of architects. But I think what has come through more and more, and it's come through my friendship with Terry, but also talking to thinkers like James Fisherless, who I know is speaking at this uh, uh, seminar, uh, is about the need to regenerate the city, uh, the uh, new thinking that goes on. Particularly, I also have a technology brief, the Internet of Things, and how cities become sophisticated in terms of the technology they, they use, the fascinating science of moving people around cities uh, and creating densely populated areas which are sustainable and green. Um, I think all those factors are interesting and, and clearly at the same time I represent a rural seat where people are mm. concerned about the level of development because they want to keep the rural character of the area they live in. So uh, I think the, for me the debate is about how we use new technology, new data, a wealth of expertise in how people live their lives in cities and suburbs to regenerate areas in a, an intelligent and thoughtful way. And I think to a certain extent we're living with the legacy of 60s planning, of people yeah. fearful of top-down planning and planning that's not at a human scale. So I think people want to feel, and I think a lot of our policies are geared towards this, like neighbourhood plans and so on, they want to feel that plans have involved them and their participation, and above all, they take into account the fact that you're dealing with human beings who want to live on a human scale. And it sounds like you're emphasising also connectivity, not only within a suburb, but with the main urban centre as well. Yeah. And, and using I new technology. Exactly. So it's a blend. You're exactly. talking about a blend of the old and the new. And people need to think, we need to think about, we need to bring together all these different trends. You know, people would like to use their cars less, would like better public transport. I think London in particular has been a great pioneer of good public transport mm -hmm. in the last 10 or 15 years. Uh, whether it's Boris bikes, better tubes, a, m a very good bus service. Uh, I think people obviously with broadband and tech 
uh, have the opportunity to work from home more, to, to be much more flexible about how they work, mm -hmm. and yet we're still rigidly structuring the working day in such a way that, you know, perhaps constrains planning. Uh, as I say, I think uh, people do recognise the benefits of dense urban living in terms of sustainability and resources. So all of those things we have to tap into when we think about urban planning. Thank you very much, Peter.